Hi everyone, this is the Level Up team. I'm Mark Berry. I'm Jennifer Fleury. Uh, Chuck McPhee. Ofer Ayal. And Alexandra French. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, basically, we just wanted to come out with this video to um, basically just shoot from the hip about managing client expectations, both buyers and sellers. So. Uh, Chuck, did you want to start with any kind of questions? Um, yeah, yeah. So we, we wanted to kind of regroup today. Um, we're kind of going into the second half of the year, 2022, and um, the market is shifting a little bit. I think um, it's definitely in the mass media, and, and we're feeling that a little bit on the ground. And so we want to kind of always give you guys real-time updates on what we're seeing on a day-to-day -day activity basis and kind of where we think things are going. So today's conversation is going to be a pretty candid conversation like we do on these roundtables. Um, as you can see, we don't have any kind of scripted presentation for this, but we're gonna we're gonna kind of dive into this and see what you guys are kind of truly seeing on the ground in our transactions. So um, I, I think for the most part, everyone would agree right now we are seeing a little bit of a shift in the real estate market. Is that is that a fair assumption across the board? Yeah. yeah. Um, we're starting to see inventory levels increase for the first time in many many years. Um, which I don't think is a bad thing, to be honest with you. Um, I still think the demand level is still there, so I think there are still buyer activity going on. But um, as we're kind of, I think we're really kind of in the, the, the top peak of this, this shift that we're experiencing right now, what are some things, uh, Alexander, what are you advising some of your seller clients to consider as we're trying to navigate these, these next few weeks, months, who knows how long? Yeah, so number one, pricing. Um, Pricing is the most important thing right now. You do not, you know, it used to be we were looking at the comps. We'd say, okay, if you know, if your house, if your neighbor's house sold for five fifty, we can maybe push the market, go five seventy five. Now we're looking, okay, like we cannot go by five fifty. We may even have to go to like five twenty five. Um, but also, like, so pricing is really important. But also have patience. Long past for the days where you're going to be on the market for two hours and get twenty offers. And now, if you're priced right, yes, your house may still get multiple offers, but you have to be patient because your house may sell the market for. 12 days, 20 days, 42 days, who knows? But you just have to be patient right now as well. I think, I think the frenzy is gone. There's still the, 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 the um, demand is there and the inventory is still lower, but it, there's not that, that crazy feeding frenzy that we're, we're seeing, which is probably a good thing. Uh, it gives more people more opportunity to see the house, um, probably with a little bit better, uh, more more like casual view of it where they're not, you know, just buying it sight unseen or, or, or offering sight unseen. And I think, I think that's probably better for buyers and sellers. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean, kind of speaking on the buyer front of it, I mean, have you guys seen anything kind of come back in on some of the offers? Um, I know kind of from a quick recap, the last two years, most of our offers when we represented a buyer probably at an extremely short due diligence period, if any, um, probably an extremely or non-existent financing and appraisal contingencies, which are some additional contingencies that we use to kind of protect our clients. Are you seeing some of that stuff come back in? Jennifer, I'll, I'll let you. Yeah, I think there's a little bit less competition. So our conversations now, everything that we do is about communicating with the listing agent. Start that report early and finding out, you know, it was, you know, six months ago or even three months ago, let's just throw all the money at it, no contingencies. Um, try to make it the best structured offer, but now it's, do you have an offer on the property? Let's get it still, you know, as competitive as we can, but find out where you're at. And so it's not necessarily that money is just being thrown at properties now. It's let's, you know, make a fair price, but let's still be, it's easy to get your due diligence down if you're working with the right vendors that can come out and do your home sure, inspection. Sure. So make your offer look better still by being able to offer a five day or even a three day due diligence and get your inspector out there the next day and get those repairs done and work with a lender that can get you your appraisal contingency knocked out, your finance contingency. So you may not have to have the highest offer, but your, you know, your contingencies are still good. So even in this market where you know, it's not quite as competitive. It's not costing you anything to go ahead and put your best foot forward. Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, I know for the first time personally, I've, I've written some offers for some buyer clients of mine that we have had a little bit of extended due diligence period, or we have had an appraisal contingency. I still think it's critical to your saying, like you, you want to stand out amongst your peers yeah. and, and really kind of present the best picture yeah. you possibly can. I've been seeing a lot of, you know, financing contingency come back in, appraisal contingencies have definitely come back in. Uh, but also the length of those. I mean, before we were trying to get in your your finance, your appraisal, within five or seven days. You know, I've seen you know a couple of ten days. I even saw a twenty-one day on an offer we just received. Um, 
And I think that is important with the fluctuating interest rates. If you're going to make sure you have that financing contingency um, with your interest rates, you kind of know what your numbers are going to be. I think a, a big play is just also a price point. So like every market's a little different. So, you know, for $300,000, uh, it could go really quickly and it's going to have multiple offers, especially if it looks really what, like good inside and everything else. So um, take that into account when, you know, finding out what. Yeah, I mean, I think it's still critical. I, I mean, I, th I think from a seller's perspective, kind of going back to the other side of this and, and kind of what, because I think the really the probably the biggest shift in, in understanding what's going on right now is the seller's expectations. And I think resetting where maybe the media is lagging potentially and where things are actually happening on the ground, right? And so I think from a seller's perspective, um, yeah, unfortunately the days of just demanding everything, I would say is probably fewer and far between. Mark's right on. I think it's a very price point sensitive topic. Um, tend to see the higher the price point, the more inventory level, the longer days on market. It's natural, there's just less people that are, can buy at that price point or those tiers. The lower the price point, the more competitive it is. You're not only competing with just normal buyers, you're probably competing with institutional buyers mm -hmm. as well. So they are still in the market, they still are going to buy real estate. Don't quote me on the stat, but I think I saw somewhere uh, over the last several months, there are about 30% of the transactions happening in our marketplace are institutional buyers. And so it's still gonna be competitive out there, but from a seller's perspective, more than ever, it's critical on pricing, conditions, doing all the right things we need to be doing. Is that, is that yeah, a fair? Yeah. Yeah. My example that I was thinking about, uh, just to add on to that, was this property is under $300,000, so hyper competitive uh, with the investor buyers. So in order to keep, like, compete with that, um, they actually went no due diligence, uh, no, it was all cash, um, and they were financially able to do that, but it's just, that's how competitive it is. No due diligence is not something I would recommend, uh, you know, it's get a home inspection, but in this case, it was, yeah, so the, still had to find a way to win. it was the way to win. Yeah. And and I, so I think they, with buyers too, I think that as far as expectations, I think the expectation maybe six months ago was to, okay, well, we're gonna have, let, let's talk about how much over asking we're gonna have to give. Yeah. You know, is it gonna be 10%, is it gonna be more, you know, how much are we gonna push? And I think now a more realistic uh, offer is more attractive if you can work on the contingency part, you know, the other things that aren't necessarily priced. And it doesn't necessarily have to, you know, just for round numbers on a $500,000 home, you don't have to start the bidding at 550 or at something like that. I think it's it's a little bit more realistic as far as the pricing goes. And then, you know, tweaking things with, you know, a shorter due diligence or, you know, having a lender that's a little bit more, um, you know, working better with uh, the other agent or local lender. So I think it's some of those other things that make you more attractive than only specifically on um, price. Well, I also want to circle back around to like what Jennifer said earlier about like having that conversation with the listing agent um, because terminations are the highs they've been now since uh, March 2020 and so while yes of course price is very important to a seller having that surefire deal that's going to get to the closing table may actually be more important to the seller so it's just keep that conversation going um, and keeping you know keep that conversation going with also the buyers um, at this point now you know we're not in the market we were back you know three four six months ago if you're referencing the buyer, you can actually go in and ask for closing costs or even ask for some repairs to be done right now. And that's different than what we've been seeing. So all this you guys are talking about, like, okay, so let's pretend I'm a seller. Like, do, should should I wait? Like, I mean, are, are prices are, are prices gone the way down? Like, what, where no, should I hold I, off? Like, Yeah, I would take advantage of the opportunity. I just had that yeah. conversation with a client and we were talking about pricing. She's like, um, you know, should I, you know, push it a little bit? And I was like, no, I think market value right now more than ever because you want to make sure that you're getting offers, the traffic, and, and getting it sold in the time frame. She wants to capitalize on the market. Sure, yeah. sure. So, so it's I, gonna, I, I recommended just the, the price on the bridge, um, which is the intersection or overlay in between different buyer pools. So in this case, you get, uh, you know, from two to three hundred thousand, as well as three hundred to four hundred thousand dot. Thousand uh, dollar buyers, and they all kind of come together at that one intersection. Um, so that's pricing on a bridge. Not always applicable in case sure, you know sure. sometimes Where it's three fifty or three quarter, three seventy five. That wouldn't have matter, but um, this case it was it was definitely the way to go. So, Over and and yeah, constant context matters. So if you're you're talking about a house that maybe is a little bit outdated or maybe you know needs some some you know 
minorly major things be, to be done with them. It, it's a great thing to sell, but you have to tell the, the buyer that, well, the, the seller, excuse me, that it's not just gonna, people don't just look past that stuff. Now, if, if the kitchen is not remodeled, let's say, or updated, that, that might be a, a, a hurdle for some people. So it, it's not that people are coming in blind like they might have been six months ago. So it, it's that expectation saying, okay, you know, if we're gonna uh, price it at this point, but you don't have a, a, a kitchen that's been updated, well, perhaps then let's not expect to get, you know, the moon, the sun, and the stars. Or if you do have a kitchen that's been updated and everything else been updated, well, maybe they will, we will can, but we will be able to get those things. But I think it's about um, that, that context makes a difference. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you guys know I'm living this right now, you know, <laughs> decided I was probably yeah. hit the max value for my home was, you know, as far as, you know, things are going. Um, but I think the biggest part of that is understanding that you want the people to walk in your home to want to put in an offer now so it's you know it may not cost you that much to get it ready but have it staged you know do you need to touch up paint in certain rooms do you, you know declutter get it ready so that the people that come in are putting in an offer because there may not be as many people just streaming through your house every 15 minutes or showings like there have been the last two years but make sure that those people, you know, in our first day, we only had three showings and we started panicking. We're like, why are there only three showings? Um, but two of those three people put in an offer and the third one probably would have, but we took one of those offers. So because the home looked like it was ready to move in, you know. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, so, so real quick, to kind of wrap this up, um, what do you, ex oh, I'll try to rapid fire these questions, maybe yes, no, um, <laughs> going into tail end of, of 2022, all right? Um, Home prices going up or going down? I think it's a combination. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, I know that's not exactly what you were, what you were shooting for. Um, I do want to kind of touch back on sending it talk a moment ago <laughs> um, about buyer sellers when it was time to buy, time to sell. So for your buyers, yes, you could try get get a deal out there if you want to. You can try to negotiate. Um, I'm not a huge Dave Ramsey fan, but he did say that you know prices. It's your you know the cheapest time to buy a house is buy it now because the rate of appreciation is still going to go up. It's going to be a slower rate, but it's still going to continue to increase. Um, so if you're a buyer, go ahead buy now. Um, and if you're a seller, should you sell now? Probably go ahead and do it because you've had since you know the market started shifting a little bit. You've had a lot of sellers who are waiting. They hit this panic, but they're like, I want to sell now. Inventory is only going to go to, it's going to continue to increase. And so why have more competition? So okay. if you're a buyer, go ahead, buy now, because it's going to get more expensive. If you're a seller, go ahead, sell now, because you're going to have more competition down the line. Again, this is not scripted, guys. Price is, <laughs> price, up price up. is going up or down? I think prices are going to go up, but not, maybe not at, the, at the, the steep rate that they were. Fair enough. Mark, up or down prices? Up and agree with that. Just a steady incline. Okay. I think we're back to an average of five to ten yeah. percent home value increase for Atlanta because that's what typically Atlanta is. Yeah, and I would conclude with everything. I mean, I, I think the the economists that we listen to and the and the, the people that we watch and, and kind of follow that are predicting where the pricing model is going to go. Um, I think you're going to see a deceleration in appreciation, so it's not going to be this. 20 30 percent that we've seen from 2020 right Which we I mean, all knew it was not sustainable yeah i mean we we saw some crazy crazy market appreciation over the last two years um do i think values are still going to go up yes i think they're going to go up at a much more healthy rate it, it is going to be more of just a natural climb i think the the funny money offers that we talked about earlier those are gone those all happened kind of february march april of this year um, i still think you got to do the basics and, and when it comes to getting your home sold so um, any other last things to kind of wrap this up Questions? I think as always, uh, you know, if you have any questions about any of the topics that we talk about, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're always here for you in, in whatever capacity you might need. Um, and thank you for watching Level Up Group. Thank you. See you next Thank time. You.